Okay. Because one time somebody came up, they're like, oh, bunnies. And then they look closer. I think they were looking at my piece, Arrows, the one <laughs> right. where it's like three rabbits lined up and they've got the arrows coming out of their chest. And they're like, oh, sad right. bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk with an artist who draws bunnies, but not just any bunnies. Bunnies who attack. Yes, they. it's actually in the name of the website and the Instagram handle that they have, Bunny Attacks. And they are just pen and ink illustrations of bunnies in, well, we actually talk about what kind of situations they're in. They're not, well, not in situations. This was the thing, is it was hard to pin down, or at least for me. I really wanted to get to the core of this. They're not bunny vampires, which is how I originally thought they kind of were. But they're also kind of Halloween bunnies, which they actually do have a sort of Halloween theme for the bunnies that they do every year. And they're just bunnies, not bunnies attack. We'll get into it. But it's a great conversation. And here it is starting right now. My name is Sarah. My art business is called Bunny Attack Illustration, and I do pen and ink illustration. I like to just describe it as I draw weird rabbits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, They're a little bit cute, a little bit spooky. Right. A little of both. Well, did they start out as rabbits and then they slowly mutated or how did that or did they you just flat out went, I'm going to draw the rabbit this way? So, <laughs> well, I've been drawing since childhood. Okay. And I've always loved animals, especially rabbits. I have two rabbits. So I can hear Simon uh, snoring right now. He's taking a nap. <laughs> okay. And so I just, I really love rabbits. I really love to draw rabbits. And in 2012, I was experimenting with this pack of Prismacolor pens I, I had gotten. Okay. Um, and I just did this black and white line drawing picture of an owl. And I just really fell in love with that illustrative style. And so I went forward with that. And previously I had drawn more animals, but recently it's it's been mostly rabbits. Okay. What made you draw an owl? Like, were you referencing something or you were just like, I'm going to draw an owl? Like what, when you mentioned that first one that you did? Yeah. So I was sitting on my, my deck at my apartment and in the wood, there was this pattern in the wood that kind of reminded me of an eye. Okay. And so I started with that and it just evolved from there. Okay. When you said the wood at first, I thought you were like, there were woods outside, but you went, no, the actual wood that was in. The Literally <laughs> just like the floor of the patio. I saw a pattern in it and I was like, oh, that's cool. That looks like an eye. I should draw that. And so it just evolved from there. Okay. And a lot of the pictures I draw, I will have a small idea and then it kind of just expands from that. Okay. And now you, when you drew the owl, was mm -hmm. the owl normal <laughs> was it a vampire owl <laughs> it's just uh line work it's just an owl like sitting on a tree branch and there's just a lot of details like within the feathers i use um like stippling and some line work for the background <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then, so when did you move on? So you own bunnies, which first of all, I want to ask about that. So you have bunnies yeah. and yeah. I, I get owning a dog. I can tolerate owning a cat. I'm just kidding. I, have, I know many cat people and I always give them a hard time. <laughs> but uh, now owning a bunny, I get that. They're cute as all get out. But when people start straying to different animals and owning different animals, um, what made you go, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have bunnies? Why did you decide to have bunnies? When my when my parents moved, you know, I was f like five years old at the time and I didn't want to move. And I was like, 
I'm not going to move unless I get a bunny. And they complied. They got me a bunny. So I've just always had rabbits since then. I just, I love them. I think they're really cute. I love their huge, <laughs> nervous eyes and their big ears. And yeah. yeah. Well, and what about, I mean, I like the floppy ones. I like the ones that look like they can't even pick themselves up off the floor. That's which, Simon. That's okay. Simon. And yep. that's. <laughs> <laughs> when I think more about it, I'm like, wait, does that mean they're sick? No, it does. I mean, that's just the way they are. But at the same time, yeah, those those are the ones I like. I, the perky ear ones, I don't trust those. Uh, <laughs> that would be Clover. <laughs> okay. All right. So now, uh, oh, first of all, I didn't even ask, where are you located right now? I mean, are you, you're in Madison, correct? Yes. Are you originally from Madison? Mm-hmm. Okay. I am. All right. Now, going back to what we were saying so we've got the you, you drew the owl and you started when did you actually start making bunnies part of the work so much so that it actually became like your handle um i would say you know maybe a couple of, like maybe around 20 14 2015 i want to say i really started to draw more and more rabbits i actually did find a print of the one i did after the owl so you can kind of get an idea of the style of it even though this is not a rabbit but okay. this is this is the same style that i did the the owl one in just like black and white with a lot of fine details okay and so how long does of, something like that take you to do Ooh, um, a very long time. Okay. Um, <laughs> initially, I didn't time my work, but I've started to recently just so I can see how long it takes me because I do get that question a lot because I really love to put a lot of detail in my work. Yeah. And especially when I'm doing stippling, it just, anybody who does stippling knows it takes forever <laughs> yeah right yeah and so and also if you do commissions or do you do commissions i have occasionally i am not doing any right now though okay well and i'm just saying that because uh that would also be a reason behind how much you would charge because of the time that it would take so yep. knowing that helps and then not that necessarily everything has to be an hourly rate, but, you know, however much time it takes to do something. Yeah. Absolutely. And how do you start a project? When you're doing one of these, you, uh -huh. I mean, of course it's pen and ink and you draw on paper and, mm -hmm. but the, are, are they motivated by something? Do you just kind of start and see where, where's this going to go? I mean, really just what is the process before you start, say maybe you have, a show coming up or you decided you want to fill your store and you want to add some more items to it what's the process going like all right here's what i'm going to do or the thought process even before you get going like what you're going to draw so a lot of times i will get an idea i'll kind of have a picture just pop up in my head and i'll draw a really loose outline just on a scrap piece of paper so i can remember and then from there, I'll pick out the paper I want to use and I'll start sketching it. And then from there, I can add, you know, the details, really fine tune it. But a lot of times I just will get a random idea. And then as I'm drawing it, I'll be like, oh, I see how this kind of like fits into my life mm -hmm. <laughs> or something I'm going through or something like that. Okay. And well, wait. Okay. Well, that makes sense at the same time. The rabbit. Again, going back to you're drawing some sort of, I don't know, forlorn, uh, uh, tortured, not tortured as in being tortured, but angry, angry bunny, angry. <laughs> you know, so, so explain it's, it's, to me that last part in connection to what you make. You know, it's it's so funny because when I do shows, people like one time, 
this just perfectly <laughs> encaps encapsulates my work. Okay. Because one time somebody came up, they're like, oh, bunnies. And then they look closer. I think they were looking at my piece, Arrows, the one <laughs> right. where it's like three rabbits lined up and they've got the arrows coming out of their chest. And they're like, oh, right. sad bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, I really process a lot of things that happen in my life into my work. And so like that one in particular is links back to the terrible relationships I've been in. <laughs> Glad you're laughing about it. <laughs> I mean, you know, really you gotta, it's, it's that balance. No, I'm, like, I'm being serious. Work, That's great. My work is so like serious and <laughs> kind of depressing honestly <laughs> but like really having a sense of humor and laughing about things is such a big part of my life so there really is that balance there you know and I, I can have a sense of humor about about things okay um, and when you do I mean do you ever set out to do I, I briefly mentioned when I was asking that question like setting up for like you mentioned a gallery mm -hmm. or maybe wanting to put more items in your online store or things like that. How many pieces do you usually set out at first to do? And is there planning behind that? Or do you just kind of wing it? I mean, I'm a wing it kind of guy. So how, how do you prepare for things? Yeah, I, I really, I really do wing things a lot. Okay. Um, the exception being is with the Halloween bunnies that I draw. So this past year, I drew some rabbits in Halloween costumes just because I perfect think sense. Cute, yeah. you know, and so that's kind of planned ahead. Um, but with my other pieces, I usually, I, I tend to, since my work takes so long to do, and since I, I'm not a full-time artist, you know, I have to go to my day job. And so it's, it would be really difficult for me to find a show and then to produce a piece for that show with a limited amount of time to get it ready you know but yeah but the reason you know going back to my artist name and everything is the reason i use rabbits is because i just i love them mm -hmm. and they've always been a really big part of my life and my name actually is inspired by my rabbit evie because she could be very sweet, but she could also be very fierce. Okay. I got that. That makes sense. <laughs> and, and one time my, my friend Claire had this to say about her. She said, seems like Evie would cut a bitch. And I can respect <laughs> that. <laughs> All right. But anyway, like, so... I don't know. I was, I talked to my rabbits, like anybody with pets, Makes sense. Know, talking to them is normal. Yeah, of course. And one of my other rabbits was getting too close to her pen. I'm like, look out, she'll attack, she'll kill you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, bunny attack. I kind of like that. So it, oh. yeah. All right. Because my, my actual name is so common, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm like, I'm no one's ever going to, be able to like look me up or anything but bunny attack like people remember that they're like oh you're the bunny artist right so yeah. okay now you also did a showing at uh, you, you did events and you've done events like art fair on the square so what is your i'm curious about this with the mm -hmm. fact that your stuff is hand drawn uh pen and ink yep. what is your setup when you go to events like this uh I, I did events for a little while and that's what I always struggled with. I always struggled with, I mean, mine, I would bring like prints in the books that I made and that's mm -hmm. about it. And I'd set it up and it's like, well, here's a pile of books. That's not interesting looking. Uh, <laughs> how was, how was your gallery set up? How was your uh, uh, event set up? What was that like? Yeah. So I'm actually in the process of brainstorming ways I can make my setup more interesting because I've just had, you know, like bins and then I'll put prints in there and have something with my postcards in it and then just stickers kind of laid out. So that is something that I'm 
currently seeking to improve. Okay. All right. Before I go back to doing shows again, you know, and maybe getting some sort of banner to hang up as part of my display. Um, Yeah. I mean, in the past, I've just relied on my actual work to draw people over to look, to look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these, the bins that you have set up, so are these prints or are these the original drawings? Yeah, so I have originals framed that I'll display. Um, I do have some of them for sale. They are priced pretty high, though, with how long they took me. Mm-hmm. And then I I do have a lot of prints. And I also have stickers and postcards that I do. Oh, okay. Where do you get your prints and your stickers done? So I get my prints done at the Picture Salon here in Madison. I don't they think are, I've heard of that. Where's that? They're incredible. So... And they actually do image capture too, which is great for me because they do the color matching and all of that, but they do clay prints Mm -hmm. and they also offer, um, they have a bunch of other stuff you can do. Like you can do greeting cards. They introduced mugs recently, which that is something I want to do. I want to create a mug with all my little Halloween bunnies on it. I think that's just be so cute. Nice. Mm-hmm. Where where is that located? I don't know why I'm not I'm blanking on this place. I can't believe I'm not familiar with it. It's on Odana Road. Okay. Mm-hmm. Huh. I drive by there all the time. I'm going to keep an eye out next time. I'll have to see mm-hmm. where that is. Okay. Cool. Um, it's across the street from an electric bike shop. If you know where that is. Oh yeah yeah yeah. It's and I think uh, there's like um a computer repair shop and a Goodwill near there. It's like down the street from the Toyota dealership. Well, everything's down the street from the well, Toyota dealership <laughs> on, on Odana Road. That's fair. <laughs> there's like three of them that's that fair. take over all the streets. Um, okay. No, I think I know where you're talking about. Now you also have a so on your website you have a website. And mm-hmm. on there, you have a shop. Now, I'm assuming the shop, because it's a Wix site, right? So the, yep. the shop comes with the Wix site. I've never used the Wix site before. And for mm-hmm. some reason, I feel weird saying Wix. You'll see I keep over enunciating it. Um, but what's the shop? What's it like working with the shop on, on that service? I've never used it. Um, it's, it's pretty easy, which yeah? is good for me because I'm not a particularly tech savvy person. <laughs> okay. All right going uh adding this stuff to the store so are you selling these prints or are you selling originals on there like what's your process for selling on your website i currently just have prints on there okay i don't have i don't have any originals listed okay i'm afraid to since they're framed i'm afraid to to send them through the mail (laughs) oh so you're selling framed prints no the originals are framed. my originals most of them are framed Okay. All mm-hmm. right. Now, as far as when you said you started drawing the first, I guess, iteration of the work that you do with the owl back in 2012, when did you <laughs> actually start showing your work publicly? When did you start putting it out there, whether it be online or even your first gallery show or your first event that you did? When did you start showing it publicly? Yeah. So, so I've had my stuff on Instagram since I think 2015 and then 2016, 2017, I had my stuff at yellow rose gallery, which was on state street. Yes. And then also at evolution arts collective. And I had my first solo show at evolution arts collective, which was on uh, South Dickinson street. Okay. And at that time, I was still incorporating my some of my photography into that. Oh. And then, like, I would say a year or two after that, I got to the point where I'm like, I just want to focus on promoting my illustration. I still do photography. I don't really have a page to promote it. I, I do more illustration than I do photography. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And then... From there, not this past summer of 2022, I believe, I had my work hanging up at the Overture Center for the summer. So that was really, that was great. Um, And I was showing along with Carolina Romanoska, 
who does these really cool ceramic, um, they're like masks and they're just really colorful and they're kind of like all these different creatures and her work is amazing. And I was so happy to show with her because I, I was already a fan that. of yeah. her work and I felt like our work really complemented each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, the Yellow Rose Gallery, um, mm -hmm. I had actually spoken with them right before the building was sold off or whatever happened to it. It was supposed to be demolished years ago and it's still I know, standing. I, I just walked by there the other day and I'm like, yeah. what's happening here? I, uh, I don't know what's going they, on there. They've destroyed and built different sections around that area before they've even done that one. It's yeah, it's crazy. But I want to say I saw your, I went to like one of the final galleries that was there and maybe uh -huh. I'm just implanting it in my head, but I swear, I'm like, oh, wait, I think I saw your work there. So it's um, possible. Yeah, I think I yeah. may have actually seen your work there. And then maybe that's what drew me to it when I saw it on Instagram. I, I was I was familiar with it or something that and it's really cool. So, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so that's uh, all right. So you started showing around that time. Now, was this just something you were motivated to do yourself? Was it like, how did you take the first step? Like, that's a hard thing for a lot of people is actually going, oh, I'm going to put my work out there. So how did you present it to people? How did you start submitting your stuff? What was that like? I just started reaching out. You know, I just started trying to look at the local businesses that showcase artists. And I, I just, I reach out, Okay, you know. And did you have like, a mission statement or something? Like, did you have to write stuff up or did you just start contacting people? Like, what was that process? No, I didn't have a mission statement or anything like that. Um, I guess yeah. artist statement. I'm sorry. A mission statement is a business oh. thing. An artist <laughs> statement, mission statement. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I have had to write artist statements okay. for, for shows, yeah. But usually when I reach out, I just include a few pictures of my work and... All right. Really kind of, <laughs> you know, like you said about winging it, I very much All right. wing it with everything. <laughs> no, I do too. I it, This will be my process. I'll hear this is how somebody did something. And then I will go, oh, I should do that. And I'll start setting it up. And then I'll instantly go, well, I'll just use this. And then I will send it to more people later and make it the way that it's supposed to be. <laughs> not actually go <laughs> let me prepare all this stuff first make sure it's nice and ready before i send it out it's like no i'm going to send this out probably within 24 hours even though i just thought of it right now so mm -hmm. that's that's my process so maybe that's kind of what you do too i don't know <laughs> it's like we'll start it and build it from there yep i know oh. <laughs> that is something i wish i was a little better with you know planning ahead and i don't know but yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you can. <laughs> now, as far as the social accounts you use, how do mm -hmm. you promote yourself aside from just going out and reaching the galleries and meeting people there? Do you promote yourself online? Do you reach out to people? Like, how do you build your account? Because you have a lot of followers, first of all. I would just like to mention that. Well, you have more than I do. <laughs> I know. I looked the other day. I was like, oh, I'm at like 1,200 something. Cool. Yeah. So I, oh, I actually would at some point love to be able to hire somebody to help me with that because mm. I do not post very consistently, especially lately. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I try to, I, I just try to think of different things to post, but it's, it's not as consistent as I would like. Okay. I try to use hashtags, you know, I try to like look at the different hashtags and I don't know, I kind of have a list of ones that I use. Um, and so because you can use up to 30 of them. So I feel like that kind of helps having those and like just thinking of different things that people might be searching for um, who might like my art, like rabbit art is one i use a lot mm -hmm. pen and ink 
uh, creepy cute, like stuff like that. You know, you just try to think of those keywords and then try to, you can search hashtags and then you can see how many people are, or how many of these hashtags are being used. And so you can kind of find ones that, you know, have around like 100,000 uses. Cause if it has like two, that's not really gonna get you anywhere because right. nobody's using it, so. Well, and the other thing too, and I run into this occasionally and it's been popping up more and more. So it did it for a while and now, it, and then it didn't do it and now it's doing it again. But have you run into, you said you can use up to 30 hashtags. The other day I was posting to Instagram on one of my other accounts and it goes, uh, you're only allowed to use five hashtags and like they're limiting the amount of hashtags in a post. Oh, and really? I've gotten that alert a couple of times and sometimes it will say that and sometimes it won't. And it seems like something like they're testing out or maybe they're going to go. In. I don't know if they're going, but I have seen that pop up where I've gone to put in like a sixth one and it's like, okay. you know, you can only put in that many. But anyway, what I was going to share with you, oh. what I've done just to get around it, I do the post and then I make a comment filled with those hashtags. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, what I, do. I do. And then it's not all in the, in the caption and everything. And yeah. that's actually what I do. Cause I, I read that it works just the same. So mm -hmm. I'm like, well, might as well just put a comment. Well, and the, it thinks the post has a comment on it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like liking your own YouTube video. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason not to. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the only reason I don't like my own Instagram post is because it'll show that I liked it. It'll say this post liked by this person who posted it and others. That's the only reason I don't do that. Otherwise, I would. Um, are, I there, know. Are, are there artists you follow on Instagram that when you're talking about these strategies or these hashtags mm -hmm. that you base it on? Like, who are some of the artists that give you the ideas for hashtags you want to use? So, I don't base it on a singular person, but I'll just kind of see what other artists are doing and kind of draw ideas from that. Mm -hmm. Just be like, oh, this is an, an interesting approach. Um, you know, and then there's the whole thing with you see a lot more reels than you do just straight up posts. And so then it's, it's kind of frustrating because you're like working on something and you're like, oh, I should probably like take a video. <laughs> <laughs> and then have to compile these videos together to post that because Instagram promotes videos more so than regular posts is what I've seen. So, yeah, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, with that too, I just, I wing it. I kind of see what other people are doing and try to, and just test it out for myself. Okay. All right. So again, you and I winging it. I love it. So maybe this will mm -hmm. work, maybe it won't. I get, I mean, mm -hmm. it's really the only way to find out. And then I won't mm -hmm. pay attention if it works or not. Hmm. I think I'm starting <laughs> right. to see where my flaw is. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I should probably check on that. <laughs> exactly. So now what about some things coming up? I think you mentioned that there mm -hmm. are things you want to prepare or set up your booth for, or try and, you know, get more, or not organized, but just think of a new way of presenting yourself. So what are some of the things that you have coming up that you could tell us about? Oh, I don't, I don't have anything planned at the moment. I'm just trying to work on things a little bit more, um, you know, but something I really would like to do is come out with more Halloween type stuff. You know, like extend my collection of the bunnies and the costumes and have stickers of those. Um, the mug, like I talked about with all the rabbits, I mm -hmm. think that'd just be so cute. Um, cause yeah, cause I do have my work in a couple of different shops. I have glitter workshop. I, at uh, Garver Feed Mill, I have print stickers, postcards, all that. I have my stuff at the Black Cat Cafe and Gallery in Stoughton, which I think is actually going to be moving locations here shortly. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think she's in the process of of uh, moving to a, a different space. Um, okay. I have my 
I have some stickers at Meet Mapleton's. I have some stuff at Communication Madison. And so for me, the biggest thing is kind of, you know, coming up with new work so I can get some new prints out there, get some new stickers out there, and then really building up for Halloween, you know. And I mm -hmm. also like to do Drawloween, where, have you heard of this? It's like, it goes by a couple of different names. The one you might be more familiar with is Inktober. Okay, that's what I was going to say is that, I, no, I've never heard of Draw, Drawloween. I can't even say it. The, <laughs> Drawloween? Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's the one that Mab Graves does where she comes up with a list of prompts. Okay. And then, so it's like every day you draw a picture based on that prompt. Hmm. But I like to try to guess what they're going to be and try to do stuff ahead of time because it takes me so long to draw even a small picture. Okay. And so that's kind of part of my plan for the for the upcoming year all right all right mm -hmm. and when you put your stuff in these stores uh do you how do you check on the inventory how do you check to see if in stock is it in stock or do you not restock it you just go and say here i'd like to put this here and mm -hmm. then leave it as it is like how do you keep in contact with the stores and the product you put there well, you know, it's based on commission. And so when they send me my payment, they'll include a list of things that sold. And mm -hmm. so I can keep track that way. And I'll stop in every so often. Well, actually, I stop in at Glitter Workshop a lot. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, I just kind of stop in occasionally and see, check on how things are going and just check in with the owner of the shop and everything. So, okay. And if people wanted to check out more of your work, where should they go do that? They should go to www.bunnyattackworks.com. I'm also on Facebook as Bunny Attack Works, and I'm on Instagram at Bunny Attack Illustration. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show.